The unsolved murder of Leslie Barker continues to baffle investigators, even after 45 long years. Who could have been responsible for the tragic demise of this Akron teacher? The answer to this haunting question still eludes us, leaving a lingering mystery that demands justice. The year was 1978, when the charred remains of Leslie Barker were discovered in the smoldering wreckage of her car. The tragic fate of this Akron teacher still lingers as a mystery leaving many questions unanswered. Little did she know that her quest for love would take a dark turn. Instead of finding the affection she longed for, Leslie Barker stumbled upon something far more sinister, death. It was a fateful night in April 1978 when this Akron school teacher decided to step out of her comfort zone and try a new computerized matchmaking activity at a local nightclub. With the dawn of a new day, the scorched remnants of Barker were stumbled upon inside her car, which had been set ablaze a mere mile away from her dwelling. The Summit County Coroner's investigation concluded that Barker's death resulted from asphyxiation. Intriguingly, her lungs showed evidence of life when the fire was ignited, leaving us pondering whether she was aware of the danger surrounding her. Tragically, the severity of her burns made it impossible for the coroner to ascertain whether she had suffered any form of assault. In their quest for answers, detectives diligently questioned several men who had been romantically involved with the 28-year-old Barker, even including the one she had met at the matchmaking event. These men willingly underwent hypnosis and polygraph tests, and astonishingly, they all passed with flying colors. Despite their efforts, the detectives were unable to pinpoint the person responsible for Barker's tragic demise. There's no evidence, Detective James Poshilech said, noting that the car fire fueled by an accelerant made the recovery of evidence difficult. There's nothing that puts anybody anywhere, he said. After more than 45 years, detectives are still at a loss, and Barker's colleagues and friends are dismayed that the case remains unsolved. Teaching ran through Barker's veins, a legacy passed down from her father, Kenneth Barker, who held the esteemed position of Dean at the University of Akron's College of Education. Following her graduation from Firestone High School, Leslie Barker chose to tread the same path and obtained her teaching degree from University of Akron. In the year 1978, she was thriving in her role as a special education teacher at Hotchkiss, a school that has since shut down and its buildings sold off. Her genuine love for her job was evident in the way she interacted with her 17 students, providing them with the care and understanding they needed. Barker organized educational outings for her students, including a visit to her residence in West Akron, allowing the children to see where she shared a home with her parents and brother. Barker was single, but that did not mean she was not trying. She made sure to socialize with her friends regularly, heading to Reds on Waterloo Road for a night of dancing and fun, embracing the disco fever of the time. In 1978, as spring rolled around, Reds introduced a fresh incentive for customers, Selectrocution, an early form of online dating that paired up bar attendees. 
That night, the bartender at Red's vividly remembered Barker and her friend perched at the end of the lengthy oval-shaped bar whenever they took a break from dancing. In 1978, George Shapiro, the son of the bar's owner, shared an interesting tidbit with the Beacon Journal. He mentioned that Barker and her friend spent a good four hours at the bar. During their time there, they were seen engaging in conversation with a couple of guys. That evening, he mentioned that he had prepared two screwdrivers for her a cocktail made with vodka and orange juice. He could not recall the exact time she departed, but he remembered seeing her around 1 a.m. In the early hours of the morning, around 5.30 a.m., a resident living on Mentor Road in West Akron was jolted away by a series of three thunderous explosions. Startled, both the resident and his wife rushed to the window and were met with a chilling sight, flames dancing in the pitch black darkness. With sirens blaring, firefighters and police swiftly made their way to the wooded area adjacent to Mentor Road. This access road, known for its romantic rendezvous, was now the backdrop for a dramatic scene. Amidst the trees, a 1977 Orange Grand Prix burned fiercely, casting an eerie glow in the night. Once the brave firefighters successfully put out the raging flames, they made a chilling discovery in the rear seat, a lifeless body. The license plate provided a crucial clue, leading the astute detective straight to the Barker residence, just a few blocks down. The identity of the deceased was confirmed to be none other than Barker herself thanks to the meticulous dental records. The initial police inquiry honed in on the man Barker had crossed paths with at Reds on the eve of her murder. This individual, 30 years of age, resided in North Canton and diligently fulfilled his duties for United Airlines at Akron Canton Airport. He informed the detectives that he had connected with Barker on the Selectrocution dating platform and arranged to meet her on Friday evening. However, before their date, Barker kindly offered to give him a ride to her place so that he could familiarize himself with the location. Afterward, she drove him back to his car, parked at Red's. As they said their goodbyes, he remembered inquiring about locking the passenger side door. He could not recall her response or if he locked it. He mentioned that he and Barker left a bar in their cars at 2.45 a.m. The man offered to take a lie detector test and passed it twice. The detective spoke with and polygraphed several other men who had been romantically involved with Barker, but none of them raised any red flags. They soon discovered that Barker had a habit of driving new acquaintances or potential romantic interests to her secluded home, so they could locate it later due to its hidden location. Additionally, they found out that Barker was well acquainted with the area where her burnt car was discovered, having used it as a secret gathering spot with friends during her youth. Along the likely route Barker took from Reds, the police set up roadblocks, stopping cars and interviewing motorists. They also spoke with newspaper delivery workers, gas station attendants, and employees at all-night restaurants along the way. Despite their efforts, no leads were discovered. In the aftermath of Barker's tragic murder, 
investigators from the state fire marshal's office made a startling discovery. They found that her car had been soaked in a peculiar fuel. Interestingly, this fuel was not your ordinary gasoline, but rather a high-octane blend commonly utilized in airplanes. This revelation immediately raised suspicions about the mysterious man Barker had encountered on the fateful night before her untimely demise. Today, investigators reveal that the initial lead was a distraction and the information in the report was misunderstood. They clarified that the individual Barker encountered was an airline counter employee with no connection to fuel pumps. Furthermore, they confirmed that the accelerant found was not aviation fuel. Lieutenant Dave Whitten and Pashilich remained tight-lipped about the specific type of fuel utilized, simply labeling it as unusual. Despite not being able to pinpoint a suspect, the detectives are all on the same page that the individual responsible for Barker's murder was familiar with her. Pashy Litch said the killer likely brought the fuel with him or lived close by, making it easy to retrieve the accelerant. Barker's murder remains unsolved, with detectives no closer to finding answers now than they were 40 years ago. This is as cold as you get, Whitten said. Let's discuss it in the comments. I thank you for your continued support, and I'll see you next Friday.